Find out the real appeal of faux flowers. Welcome to Decorating Tips and Tricks. I'm Anita Joyce with Kelly Wilkness, and this is episode 319, Faux Flowers and Plants, A Closer Look. And the show notes for today's episode can be found at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 319. And this is a reader request topic. Many, many Mm -hmm. people have asked about what we feel about the faux mm-hmm. flower situation, how to care for their faux flowers, when it's time to let them move on, all sorts of questions involving decor and faux flowers slash plants. Right. Because it they're really it's a touchy thing and I you know, everybody prefers real flowers, but we also know that you know, they're just not going to last forever. They're not realistic for a lot of people. Some people have allergies. Some people don't have time to go to the store to get them. And to be honest, it it, it is an expense if you're buying them all the time. Even if you're getting them at Trader Joe's like we do, you know, for three or $4 a piece, you know, it it adds up for sure. Yeah. And I have to thank everybody that brought up this topic because it really forced me to take a closer look. And as I've been saying to Anita, I have so much information on this topic. And in taking a closer look, I think, you guys, I think I might be a potential convert. Not a total Mm -hmm. convert because fresh flowers and live plants will always, always, always have a place in my home. But that being said, I have opened my mind to the world of faux And so we're going to be sharing what we now know. So then you can decide whether there's room Mm -hmm. in your life, in your home for these faux versions. Um, There's a lot of good reasons. And Nita just listed a whole bunch of Mm -hmm. them. Why you might want to open up your mind if your mind isn't already open. Mine was decidedly closed. And usually I'm a pretty open-minded person, but I was Mm -hmm. like, oh, no, no, no. I mean, look, I wrote a book on fresh flowers and caring Mm -hmm. for them and creating floral designs and all that. And I absolutely love flowers and gardening. And I love the effort that goes Mm -hmm. into creating a floral design because to me, that's really not, you know, effort in a bad sense. It's just a beautiful thing to be able to spend your time doing. But wow, there's good foes out there. Well, you know, I was also anti-foe. And the reason was because when I think of faux flowers, I'm thinking of all these bad faux flowers I've seen. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about those very unnatural looking arrangements uh, from that people used to have on their dining room table in this one vase and it was be like three feet tall and huge. And it was obviously not real flowers. And that used to be the thing. Everybody did that. That was what you were supposed to have in your foyer and, and on your dining room table. But it's so, and so we're not really talking about that. I, I think that the trick with the faux is to make it look as much like real a real arrangement or real flowers as possible. And I'm like you, Kelly, I was really not very warm to the idea because I've seen so many, you know, bad ones and I've had so many bad ones. And when I switched to the fresh, I thought, oh my goodness, there's just such a huge difference. I'm, you know, I'm not going back. But in researching for this uh, episode, I really found some really nice ones. And I think I'm going to try some of these. I mean, they're, I found some amazing ones. You probably did too. And I thought, wow, this really, I'm going to try it. Yes. And even in my research, I found a wonderfully written blog post from Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I think one of the interior design no-nos we were talking about (laughs) was faux flowers. And when I read it, I was like, oh gosh, how are we going to get around this? But it's so true. You were talking about sort of your grandma's floral arrangement with- bright blue tulips, uh, you know, and like sort of sparse and a little dusty and, you know, with bent bottoms and just stuff that just didn't look good anymore. You know, like something you would see at a garage sale. And what I was saying, right. And I didn't say, you know, I I mean, obviously it's your choice, do what you want, but I was just suggesting that if you're going to use them, yeah, be be careful about and try to buy the kind that look realistic. So yeah, right. it, I had a Which few caveats in there. If you, oh, if you, of, yeah. I, of 
course I read every single <laughs> oh, word. Oh, stop it. Every single word. <laughs> You're but cracking it, me up. Of course you did. And of course we're going to say these same things today. Like mm-hmm, we're mm-hmm. not going to be like, hey, you know, run out to Joanne's and get those you know, blue geraniums that are plastic <laughs> and on sale. No, that's not what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. But it really is. I think the first step, and certainly for me, is that just, you know, it's that sort of changing your mindset. Like, like remember when everybody was like, ew, carnations. Oh, they're mm-hmm. so bad. No, I'm talking about fresh flowers. Like, ooh, who would use carnations? Like, mm-hmm. Ooh, mm-hmm. Because you're thinking about the carnations that they dip and make green for St. Mm-hmm. Patrick's Day or make mm-hmm. all those like really garish you know, saturated colors for Easter or something like that. And you're like, oh, that doesn't even look like a natural flower. Well, of course, you're not going to be drawn to carnations. But carnations as a as a actual fresh flower have really made a comeback in the mm-hmm. last several oh. years. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah. very respectable. Very right, respectable. respectable. Especially the spray kind. And they last so long and they're quite charming and all that. You know, it's, it's not, you know, a, a green boutonniere anymore. So when, if you're thinking about faux flowers like I was before and thinking about that ugly arrangement that's uh, that's dusty on someone's coffee table that's been there for 10 years, erase that, erase that from your mind and, and open up your mind to what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And I think the real trick is when you're using faux, first off, you want to start with quality faux. But the other thing is not to put some arrangement together that you wouldn't do with with real flowers. So is this something that, you know, you want, if you, when you walk by, it's obvious that it's not real, then, then I think that's probably not the direction we're suggesting. We want it to look as real as possible. So you want things that look like live plants or maybe an arrangement of all the same flower, or maybe just a few different types. Mm -hmm. And I found one thing too, interestingly enough, when I was looking through here, this is kind of my own thoughts and you can Tell me whether you agree or not. I think if it's the kind that we see made up into faux flowers all the time, like roses, when I see a rose, I think I kind of, you, when you're used to seeing the faux roses. So when you see a rose, it's pretty obvious to me whether it's uh, often, whether it's real or not. Whereas some of these other less, uh, less seen faux, mm-hmm. I think it's not as easy to tell whether it's a faux or not. Does that make sense? Oh, I so agree. I so agree. I mean, it doesn't have to be crazy exotic flowers, but Mm -hmm. ones that you just wouldn't be uh, so typical. That you don't see is all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that they are, they can pass muster as, maybe that's real, maybe it's not. And you know, you don't even have to be sort of really, your intention does not have to be that I'm going to try to pull the wool over everyone's eyes and make them think this is real. but you want to definitely treat the faux flowers as if they were real flowers to the extent that you can. And I mean, obviously you don't have to put them in water and stuff, but you actually can. Most of the bottoms are going to be some sort of plastic or material that can go in water. I mean, why Mm -hmm. not? You can do all of those things and still enjoy them. It's a floral arrangement, whether it's real or fake, it's still going to bring joy and cheer up a room. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you can do and, and you have dark corners in your house where you want to put a faux plant and you just really want the, the touch of greenery or you uh, aren't home enough to be able to care for these plants and flowers and change the water or water them and do that, definitely explore the world of faux. Because, I mean, it'll add so much to your home, even if it's not a real flower. Mm-hmm. Well, and so I wanted to add to this, this isn't actually faux, but I'm I'm including in this preserved items like preserved boxwood is a favorite of mine. So it's not faux, but it's not live. You're not having to water it. So I love using the preserved boxwood wreaths, uh, the preserved boxwood balls. Uh, There's other boxwood things that you can get, but those look fantastic. And I love using the, the boxwood wreaths year round. And another thing that I think looks fantastic year round are the moss balls which are just, you know, like styrofoam balls covered in moss. You can make them yourself or you can buy them already put together. Yeah, I I so agree. I love preserved boxwood. And I have my wreath in the entryway that I leave all year round. I just It's just completely simple. There's nothing on it. And it just goes, you know, from season to season. I think it's beautiful. The um, 
the thing about the materials that faux flowers are made of these days, I mean, you you think faux sort of interchangeable with the word silk, but it's not all silk flowers. Some of them were made with silk, of course, but now it's polyester. Or there could be even velvets. There's a lot of different materials mm-hmm. that go into uh, the creation of faux flowers now, but we just sort of like seem to throw that blanket term, either faux or silk. But the fact is that the materials have gotten so much better. So mm-hmm. they don't they don't look fake like they did, you know, 10, 20, certainly 30 so, years some ago. Some of them. Some of them don't. Well, here's another idea that's kind of an in-between thing, because mm-hmm. I think a lot of the orchids, the faux orchids, actually look real. And it seems like if you have an orchid plant, a lot of times it just blooms for a while, a short time, and then the bloom is gone. So one option I've heard of people doing, and I've seen, I haven't done this yet, but I don't have an orchid plant here, is to put the faux bloom in with your real plant. Have you seen that? No. Well, why not, so right? They, so they take the faux orchid flower and they put it on just the Just stick it stem. in the dirt. Yeah, just stick it in the dirt oh, with wow. the real leaves. Yeah. Oh, well, my, oh my gosh. Why not? Why not? I have the funniest story to tell you, and she won't mind, and I don't even know. Uh, Shauna's, my client, Shauna, she's been listening to the podcast, but I think she's like still in like the hundreds. So uh, she's going to not get to this for a while. <laughs> I'm going to say, so I go to Shauna's house last mm-hmm. week, and I've been working with her for years. And- we did her whole living room over and it looks fantastic. And she's got this beautiful light filled living room and she's got this giant orchid on the coffee table. And I'm like, Shauna, that looks great. And I hadn't been inside in a while. We'd been working out in our garden. So Mm -hmm. I probably hadn't been inside for like eight months. She's like, I've had this orchid for like over a year. I don't know. Someone gave it to me last Christmas. So the Christmas 2017, and she's like, and it just, it's just, it's just beautiful. And it just stays just like this. And I just, do you think it's right? Because I just, I water it like, I don't know, every six weeks or so I water it. Oh, no. I I I can feel where this is going. I go over and I stick (laughs) my finger in the pot, you know, to say whether or not it's dry. Well, first of all, it's not really in the orchid medium, which is usually like that mulchy stuff and Mm -hmm. not a lot of dirt. It's like Mm -hmm. in in sand. And then my finger won't go in because it's Uh, like cement with sand. Uh-huh. And then I look closer and the, <laughs> oh, honestly, I look at her and she, and she's looking at me still like, so like smiling, like, cause she can't, because she can't, she's not really good with the garden. She's a dentist and she's never home. Uh-huh. And she's like, uh-huh. yeah, she's looking at me like, she's so proud of this orchid. I almost couldn't tell her, but I started to laugh. She's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, it's not real. <laughs> it was fake. And well, we, that's a good foe that you can't she, tell. Oh my gosh. It, Anita, it was such a good foe. I wow. had never seen, and I was so close to it. And then the only way well, the tell, leaves look kind of the real leaves look kind the of rubbery, leaves are you very know, strappy. But the flowers were bang on, and the only way you could tell is, you know, at the end of an orchid, how it still has the buds, a little cascading uh-huh. buds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You could tell that those were plastic. Plus, I you know was so rude to stick my finger in it to see whether or not it was dry. And then I was like, "Well, hey, she was is, asking. It's in cement." Oh my gosh. We laughed for, I don't know, like a half hour. We laughed so hard about it. And then she's, she's like, well, this is so great because my dental office is so dark. I'm going to Now I don't there. have to water it so much. <laughs> exactly. She's like, I thought it needed to be in this room. <laughs> That's so there are obviously very good fake orchids out there. Yeah. Well, there are. That's what I'm saying. I think that's one of the ones that's, well, in the leaves, um, just the texture of them, I think right. that's pretty easy to replicate. Right. Uh, right. With with faux materials. So, yeah. Right. So I well, wanted to go through some mm-hmm. of the pros and cons. And okay. And also, All right. um, you know, some ways to, uh, some things to look for when you're selecting. So you're you're buying, you know, it doesn't have to cost a lot. Some of the, the ones that you can get don't have to be that expensive, but you want to look for certain things to know whether or not it's going to look good. So obviously the pros long lasting, uh, you can get whatever flower you want. So, you know, particularly if you're doing uh, a wedding, even, uh, it doesn't have to be just florals at home, but maybe you're doing an event or something. And if you want peonies in January, well, you know, you can get them. They'll just think you flew them in from some exotic place. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously don't have to water less expensive over time. Now, honestly, some of the foes are very expensive and you might, you know, catch your breath when you see some of the prices on a, Mm -hmm. a really beautifully done faux arrangement. But when you think about it, 
even sometimes just going to Trader Joe's, if I buy a hun- whole bunch of bouquets for, uh, you know, a blog post or something like that, I'm like, woo, I just spent $70, you know, like <laughs> on flowers that are gorgeous, but they're not going to last that long. Sure, if you're buying one bouquet, you can get out of there for $4.99. But if you're talking about a lot of flowers, definitely less expensive over time. And, um, you know, you, like, like Shauna, you can use them at any location you want. Uh, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be. If it's a plant, it doesn't have to be sunny. If it's a floral arrangement, you really wouldn't want to put natural, fresh florals in a bright, sunny place because that cer- certainly shortens the lifespan of them. So you can put these foes anywhere. And so what's what's the real con? They're not real. That's really what else. Well, is I there? think <laughs> well, well, the con is if they look fake. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. If they, look I think fast. if they look real, I don't see that being being a con if they look real it's just hard to find the good ones yeah but so, yeah i mean, yeah. well in the cost i guess there's the initial layout of cost in the beginning right so oh so uh, let's talk about like what are you going to be looking for because not all foes are going to be created equal mm-hmm. right so you want ones that are going to be so lifelike like shauna's orchid that you have to mm-hmm. get really close and almost feel mm-hmm. them to be able to mm-hmm. tell they're not real mm-hmm. um it's very helpful to know what the real flower looks like. Oh, that's a good point. Right? Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, somebody, oh, especially in the lower priced end, they might stick a, you know, orchid leaf on something that shouldn't have it or a geranium shite leaf or something like that, or just the way the flower meets the stem. If you're familiar with the way the real flower looks, then you will be in a better position to choose a good faux flower. Well, perhaps it's just been GMO'd. We could have been GMO'd, yes. Oh, yeah, you never know. And then um, for the high quality ones, you're going to look for wire that's going to come through the stems and the leaves, the flowers, and the petals. So it'll be very thin wire, but almost like the wired ribbon that people are familiar with, and probably not even that thick of a wire. There's just going to be something that gives you the ability to shape it in a more lifelike way. Rather than it just being all flat or scrunched or, you know, this is just the way it is. And Mm -hmm. um, another thing to look for are longer stems. Sometimes in the cheaper foes, the stems are really short. Um, So look for Mm -hmm. longer stems. It gives you more flexibility in how you're going to use them. Mm -hmm. And usually the higher end florals will have the, the tape. So the actual floral tape wrapping the stem. Mm -hmm. Another thing to look at is that, um, the flower is matte, not, not like a shiny look. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. you know, clearly not, uh, you know, you don't want plastic, but not even a shiny fabric or anything like matte is better. And I would stay away from the ones that have like those faux water droplets on it and stuff. You mm-hmm, know, my, like mm-hmm. that might catch your eye initially, mm-hmm. but when it's like that and it never changes, you know, it just really, uh, you know, it screams out that it's faked. Mm-hmm. Um, also ones where you can see the seams mm. or you can see mm-hmm. where the flower is attached to the stem. That's mm-hmm. a dead giveaway. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where I saw some of these, the difference between the high quality ones and the lower quality ones. When you can see where the flower snaps onto the stem, if you can yeah. see it's pretty obvious there, then, you know, then you're going to know. Right. From right. pretty far away, probably. Yeah. exactly. And just so you know, when you're, If you're going to pay up for a a floral arrangement, um, a lot of the the petals and the flowers are actually hand painted. So there's, if you're paying a lot of money, that's what you're paying for. It's really artistry Mm -hmm. uh, where they're going to be creating the different tones and shades uh, of the petal because, you know, that's that's the hallmark of a real flower. It's going to have different shades. You know, it'll be deeper in the center probably. And then lighter, you know, pinks or whatever color as, as the petals move out. So if you're seeing a faux that's just completely all one color, no tonality, nothing, that is also going to look fake. Yeah, that's a good point on the artistry of them. I mean, these are almost all of them, I would think are handmade. They're going to have to be, they're just so complicated. I can't imagine that these could all be done without somebody actually working on them. Yeah. 
So, and most of the people that we're going to recommend to you today are involved in, you know, the actual creation of the flour. It's not like they're getting pumped out from some factory. So we've got some really nice, high quality ones to share with you today. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co dot C-O slash DTT and use the code DTT. Another thing to look for, and this is on probably the really cheaper end ones, sometimes you see the edges that the flowers are actually frayed. You know, like it's because it's yes, such a fabric, I've seen that like, mm-hmm. polyester like it's thing. coming. Yeah, like the fabric's fraying, like yeah. you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you want to, obviously that's not what a flower is going to look like. So you want to stay away from that. Um, and a way to make them look more real, incorporate with them with branches, you know, in a big bucket or something like that. So maybe you just have some big stems, like some forsythia or something like that, and incorporate them with real actual wood branches. And that can be an incredibly long lasting Mm -hmm. arrangement that has real impact. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, and I've seen some high quality foes where they've added things to real branches. Did you see that on my blog? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, no, you're setting me up for that. <laughs> no, no, you have that on your blog. I mean, I've just yeah. I've bu- I bought some like that in the past. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, so I um mm-hmm. I was going to mm-hmm. talk about that. So actually, so the one thing I was talking about now is like mixing in faux uh, stems of flowers mm-hmm. with actual wood branches. But um, I don't know, a year or two ago, maybe more, I bought branches and then I went to I think it was Michael's and I bought sprays of small little flowers and I took them all off the plastic stray so they were not expensive at all and then I glued them onto the actual branches to make them look like flowering branches oh nice yeah and they've really lasted Mm -hmm. nicely I just um I brought them back out not too long ago they're great for the spring and uh it really didn't take too much time so I could put a link to that tutorial in there the only thing you have to be careful of is like just let them dry because if you pick up the branch and the glue starts dripping and it becomes messy but um 
it was really inexpensive because you can sort of just dot the flowers. You don't have to put too many on the branches, you know, maybe uh, five or seven on each branch. So I got away with a few sprays and that had a lot of little blooms on them. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. And we also talked about, you know, putting your foes in real water. You know, Mm -hmm. there's that fake water. I've seen the fake water. I'm not a fan of the fake water. Even though yeah. I'm warming up to this fake flower thing. I'm yeah, well, maybe flower. we can only go, you know, we're... We I can only go we, so far. Well, we're <laughs> dipping our toe in. We're, <laughs> not in oh, the Oh, you'll water. be there in a few weeks, I I'm think. I'm not dipping my toe in the fake <laughs> Water. Yeah, because I think the fake water, like I've even seen them in stores and they uh-huh. like, oh, that looks really good. And it's just a little bud vase, something like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But then, you know, even if it's just sitting there for a couple of days, the fake water gets dust on it. And then how do you get in there? You know, you'd be like <laughs> in there trying to get the fake, <laughs> d- the dust off the fake water. Whereas well, that's if a you good get point. a stem that is fake, it should be able to go in wa- real water. Well, you know, interestingly enough, I, what I'm thinking about using uh, some s- faux uh, stems for are my big demijohn bottles. They're not really cut out for putting flowers and real flowers because right. they're too tall and you have to have water in there. And so I'm thinking that might be nice to put some branches of something in uh, because I found some faux forsythia that I thought, oh, that might be nice and some other branches like that. So list of some sources for these foes? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. I've got several that I found. Uh, so one that I found, I'm I, I'm going to list specific ones. Does mm-hmm. that sound good? Because sometimes there might be a place where I liked one thing, but I didn't sure. like the other things they had yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one I found, and again, we'll have all the links to all of these in the show notes. Uh, one I found that I liked was at Urban Outfitters, and it was a faux eucalyptus. And I thought, you know, now that would be nice putting that in a big bottle. And then you wouldn't worry. I guess you could put some water in there, but you wouldn't, you know, for looks, but you wouldn't have right. to. Right. You know who has a good a eucalyptus too? Eucalyptus. <laughs> I didn't really say that very well. A very good looking eucalyptus leaf is Ikea. Oh, cool. Four ninety nine. That's impressive. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, Let's what about, on. I found a faux allium from mm-hmm. CB2. Mm-hmm. And now that's something that you don't see very often in the faux. Were they uh, the big round? Yes, alliums? I yes. love those. I know. They are. I would very love to see this in person. Plant. Yeah, I think it, it's really beautiful. I'm I'm really excited. I would love to see this one in person. Do you have a CB two near you? CB uh, no. I, I, I they're I online. Think I have a crate and barrel too near me, but I have a crate and barrel, and I have. Is that crate and barrel? I didn't even know it was crate and barrel. Yeah, it's crate and barrel. That's how too. little I know about them. No, yeah. I don't have one near me. Well, maybe you do because you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can go check. You can research that. Um, I don't have a CB two near us, but we have a crate and regular crate and barrel, and that's where I got these four Scythia branches that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. I love them. Go well, ahead, you have some more. Okay. Well, some succulents. These are mm-hmm. CB2 also. Mm-hmm. And they look like they've been uh, hand painted, like you were talking about before, because the color is so beautiful and natural looking. I think these are really lovely. I have to say, I think that the darling little succulents, you know, they became the darling of everyone mm-hmm. as real plants. The little but, ones, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. the little ones. But then mm-hmm. I think that they also blew the door open for all faux flowers. That's what I'm going to say. I think they started people having a fresh eye on faux Mm -hmm. flowers. And maybe because like we're saying with the orchid leaf, it's it's probably not so hard to make a good looking faux succulent. You know, it's a little bit different than making a faux Mm -hmm. rose, of course, because that's super hard to do. Uh, But, you know, a succulent, the way it's uh, designed and the thickness of it. And, you know, there are some bad ones out there, but even on the cheaper end, the faux succulents look pretty good. Well, that's what I was going to say. I think you're right. It's really easy. I've seen some pretty inexpensive succulents that look very real. So I'm going to completely agree with you on that. And the ones that I'm talking about are actually quite tall stems. So they're not the little small ones, mm-hmm. uh, but they look kind of like calancho leaves, I guess, but they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're longer. Um, 
but yeah, I agree with that. These are, you're right. I mean, the, the foes were kind of out for a while and then everyone had a faux little calancho or other little succulent uh, everywhere. And, and they, they really looked pretty real. Yeah. And probably if you're going to get them, I mean, sometimes they might come in a little pot that looks pretty good, but maybe just buy them loose, which is what you can do at a lot of the places that we're going to be telling you about today and linking uh, to these resources in the show notes, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. then you can put them in your own pot. You could even put them in real potting medium, or you could put a little moss or something like that. And it makes them look a little lot more authentic. Oh, that's a great idea to do the moss. Something else I found that's a very airy plant uh, with terrain. I know you love terrain. I do love terrain. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's called a faux lavender flower spray, but oh. it's not a lavender plant. So I, it's just the flowers are lavender colored, oh. but this isn't, this just doesn't look like lavender to me at all, That's but they they look, it's just kind of a loose spray. And this mm-hmm. is another one of those. I thought, you know, this would just be pretty, a lot of it in a little, in a little pitcher or mm-hmm. in one of those big bottles. And it looked pretty realistic to me. Oh, that sounds really pretty. Yeah. I love to, yeah, the terrain stores are fantastic. Really mm-hmm. lovely. If, if you're not familiar with those shops, Go have a look, everyone. They're really lovely. Um, well, I mentioned IKEA. There's a couple of other ones. Everybody's starting to have these flower shops. Have you noticed that as well? Uh, well, I've noticed my IKEA. I was there recently, and they had a lot of real flowers. I didn't. Ch- I didn't notice the faux ones, or I would have gone and checked them out. Well, Crate and Barrel has a whole selection. CB2 has a, a collection. Pottery Barn has a huge collection. Now, I have to tell you. I do like a lot of what Pottery Barn does, and I think that they're great for a lot of foundational things. I went in specifically when I knew we were going to do this episode to see what was going on in person. I didn't think their quality was very good at all. Sorry, Pottery Barn. Oh. I was not, I was not impressed. Um, so, and I, I was thinking if I was going to try faux branches or faux flowers, which I wanted to do, you know, to really experience it so we could really tell you what we thought – I was thinking, gosh, what would I would really like is some forsythia. Um, it reminds me of when I was little and of my house that I grew up in. And I can't have it here. It doesn't grow. And I, you know, that's that yellow is kind of my pop color. So I thought, well, that would be perfect. So I went to Pottery Barn. They were $34.99 for a stem of forsythia. And I was like, eh, this doesn't even look that good. Okay. Mm-hmm. So and I looked at all the other things, not too impressed. I went to Crate and Barrel, which is like down the street. Beautiful for Scythia branches. Oh. $12.99. Mm. Yeah, that's a big difference. So I bought five and I put them in a big galvanized pitcher that I have, like one that stands on the ground. If anybody's seen my porch blog or um, videos of my porch, it's usually outside. But I brought it in. I have my real branches in it. And I stuck in these five forsythia branches and I love it. It's so pretty and it's just the pop that I needed for spring in my entryway. So I would highly recommend checking out Crate and Barrel. And I can vouch, even if you wanted to buy them online, I feel confident enough to tell you that I I could be your eyes on them. I think they're really good. And for $12.99, I thought they were great. Another thing I really like in the faux are the olive trees. I haven't done that yet. I'm very intrigued by them. Well, you know, it's hard to, I don't know. I mean, if you look closely enough, you can definitely tell that they're faux, but they're, I love olive trees, I guess so much. So you're talking about the little ones that you could put on? uh, Yeah. And the big ones, but yeah, the little ones. I mean, I saw one from terrain. I thought it looks okay. It, Uh if you look closely at it, you can tell it's faux. Right. Uh, but I, I don't know some, it's hard to get that one just right, but I do like the look of them. Okay. So now, um, oh, oh, just one other store that everybody can get to is Pier One. I'm hearing, I, I haven't gone in person, but I'm hearing that their foes are really good and a great price point. So that might be someplace you would rather check out. There's a Mm -hmm. few places that you you know, wouldn't be able to check out unless you're listening from the UK or um, another I, place in I saw some that yeah. looked really nice. I thought, oh, darn, we're not, it's not available here. So um, this, she's an interior designer, Abigail Ahern. She's, you know, just like a hot interior designer in the UK. She, 
she has a store online and she is absolutely beautiful and very unique. You know, like, uh, like you were saying, Anita, if you don't do mm-hmm. a flower, that's people are that accustomed to seeing, or maybe it's just not as run of the mill. Uh, you could probably get away with a faux easier. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. really beautiful. Definitely even just a, worth a visit to go look at a shop. And another one here on stateside, Diane James, she's in Connecticut and she makes all of these are, arrangements, floral arrangements, and she makes them all by hand. Uh, The price point reflects that and they're probably Mm -hmm. all hand painted, but they are absolutely beautiful. And the reviews of her work all over the internet are just praiseworthy. So everybody seems very impressed with what she's producing. Oh, nice. Yeah. One more from Terrain was a Varia spray. They look like, um, oh, prickly little kind of balls Uh on the stems. Really pretty. I thought those looked very unique. And I was listening to you, but I'm trying to remember the Forsythia you saw. Was it Pier 1, did you say? No, the Forsythia is at Crate and Barrel. Okay, because I saw some online from Pier 1 that looked pretty nice. Which was the one that you said was not nice? Pottery Barn. Pottery Barn. I honestly think you were not listening. but Well, no, I was, but I'm trying to look at my notes too. (laughs) What do you I think, do remember everyone? that. Do you think she was listening? Oh, if there's going to be a good thing today is not a quiz day. We only have well. There's so many Wednesday. links. I know so much. There's so much to know. It's just too much. And plus, we're just oh. like our, we're still getting our minds around the whole faux thing, which is a little jarring. Well, well, that I'm even okay. talking about faux flowers. So I'm going to give you a break on that. Oh, I'm thank you, thank you. Okay. Really remembering what I'm saying. Yeah. So I found a new floral place or faux floral place, new to me probably been around for a while, called McGee and Company. Have you heard of them? I didn't know they just did florals. Don't they do? Well, oh, I don't know if they do other. No, I I don't know if they do other things. I'm just saying it's new to, they've probably been doing florals for a long time, but I was not aware of them is what I'm trying to say. Okay, I don't, I'm just thinking, I don't know if it's the same McGee that I know of. McGee and Company. Yeah, Mm McGeeandCO.com. Beautiful, Mm -hmm. beautiful pieces. I mean, I, I think- just there were so many beautiful pieces on their website, and the one I saw that uh, well, I saw several that I really liked, but the quince blossoms. Oh, were, I love quince. I know, beautiful. Are they and branches real, or, or yes, branches? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm really like I said, I'm really thinking about something like that, and I I like the color because it looks like it's just kind of a, a cream and a soft pink. Mm-hmm. So I think that would be nice uh, in, like you said, maybe some uh, enameled buckets. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Oh, it would be so pretty in like, or a, mm-hmm. like a blue enameled bucket or or pitcher or something like that. That would be stunning. And I think the branches, like the succulents, is kind of a good way, as Anita was saying, to sort of dip your toe into the world of faux and see if you're comfortable with it. That's kind of what I'm doing here with my Forsythia branches. As actually- in, I think. It's mm-hmm. it's easier to get those right, is what we're yes, saying. Yes, yes, and and kind of how you can mix them in with the real deal, like the real wooden branches. Mm-hmm. I think that kind of eases you into it, and then you can see. I mean, I, I'm not ever going to have a bowl of blue tulips with fake water anywhere <laughs> in my house. So don't you know? Don't get me wrong. I'm not going that way, and I'm always going to have fresh flowers as long mm-hmm. as I can either grow them or you know. Spend mm-hmm. four ninety nine for them at Trader Joe's. I will always well, have some of that going on, but it doesn't have to be. Now I know I don't have to have such a strong opinion against the foes. Well, and I have a couple more of the McGee and Company Ooh, bring ones. Them. Uh, the li- you know, I love lilacs. I love lilacs. And I, you know, I don't think they grow here in Houston, but I miss them. They don't grow and so here. I- Okay. So I saw one on the McGee company that was really beautiful and it's really tempting me. So I'm thinking about that one. I'm thinking, but I probably Mm -hmm. will just start with the branches to be honest. And then they had a faux lemon branch that I thought was really pretty too. So it's branches with the leaves and the lemons on them. So I thought "Mm, that might be worth a try. And then the pottery barn, people were saying this one was good. But but now that you've said this, I'm like, "Mm." it was a pink hydrangea that had got a lot of good reviews online, but now I'm kind of, I'd go yeah. look. I would go no, look. I haven't seen. And I have to preface this by saying, I haven't seen any of these in person. I'm just looking mm-hmm. online and going by people's reviews and things. Right. 
Right. Yeah, I would definitely go see it. I mean, you know, I may not, I don't remember whether I saw the Hydrage or not, but I wasn't, I was prepared to be wildly impressed because when the Pottery Round catalog came, it all looked so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of like, I, Mm. you know, I was like, "Hmm." I turned up my faux you know, Your phone nose? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't want to say I turned up my phone nose because then people might think I have a fake nose, but I don't. But I do But I do have fake branches now and I'm okay with it. So if you have some fake flowers or you're thinking about it, um, here's some ways that you can take care of them. So you Oh, and them. if you have some recommendations for us, send them in because we'd love to share them with people. Yeah, for sure. So, and you've got to want to take care of them. So if you uh, want to try the hairdryer, method. That's your hairdryer on the lowest speed and the lowest heat. And you just gently blow the dust off. So because they are going to get dusty. I mean, you know, real flowers probably get dusty if they last, you know, more than a week. Um, Mm -hmm. Or you can do this one, you shake it. So you put them in a plastic or a paper bag with some salt or rice or some sort of cornmeal, something that will help the dust shake off. Like I'm thinking that's for like a really dusty arrangement, which I don't even really want to think about. Mm -hmm. Um, Or you can just gently, you know, in your spare time, (laughs) dampen a soft cloth with water or water and white vinegar and wipe down the leaves. Now, this would be a good method if you had, say, like Shauna's orchid, because you've probably got three strappy leaves and that's it. And that'll take a few seconds. But, you know, if you've got ones with a spray flowers and a zillion little leaves, that's not going to be what you want to do. Um, and there's also a way to uh, coat them with a UV resistant spray so they don't fade. But, you know, some might even come that way. I would check into that and read reading the description. I would be a little wary of spending a lot of money on a really high end faux floral and then spraying it with something that might change the color or affect it in mm, some way. Mm-hmm, so I would, mm-hmm. you know, definitely uh, proceed that way with caution. But here's the thing too: if you're going to have faux flowers, as we said, they're bringing cheer, they're bringing joy. It's a pop of color. It'll be pretty. It may be in a place where you couldn't have real flowers, something like that. So, you know, there's a lot of good reasons to do it, but there's also a lot of good reasons not to keep it for 10 years, you know, or, and if you want it to seem like it's real flowers, then don't leave them out for a long time. Because if people come to your house, they'll be like, how can those flowers last so long? You know, so (laughs) maybe rotate them around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, you know, when it's time to go, it's just time for it to go. So all the shaking and the hair drying and the wiping down is probably not going to revive an older looking arrangement. And isn't that what we were talking about in the beginning? Because that's what seems to pop into people's mind's eye, like these kind of squished and dusty things from years gone by. You don't want yours to end up like that. I think if it's time to, if you're at that point where you're like, oh, I'm going to put this up for a while, maybe just move it on to, to a new owner. Because like you said, then they, once they get squished, once they're put away, I think when you bring them out, you're tired of looking at them. They probably don't look as good. Right. Maybe they're covered with dust for whatever reason. You know, I, they don't, I don't think it's, it's something you want to keep forever necessarily. I think it's something, obviously you keep it longer than a fresh, a real flower, but I think you're going to get bored with it. And so, yeah, I wouldn't think, oh, this is something I'm going to have for my entire life, but maybe I'm uh, maybe just going to have this for a year or something like that. Right, right. Or, you know, start out with something very seasonal, like these branches that we're talking about is very spring-like. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to try that, then, you know, when summer rolls around, get one of those wrapping paper plastic bins or uh, find some a uh, large, taller can that you can put a bag over them and you can mm-hmm. store them that way and put them away till next year. And then right. it'll be fun to take them out again. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can change them out seasonally. I'm just trying to think of something where you're not going to be bored from seeing them all the time. Yes, yeah. Um, okay, so we talked to you about the $250 giveaway for D Lawless. So please definitely head over to the show notes and sign up for that. If you haven't already, we would, we just cannot wait to give the $250 gift certificate to one of you. And we talked about the 15% off the everlasting florals of Bespoke. We'll put the uh, link in the show notes as well. And then if you haven't heard, and if you haven't signed up yet, please sign up for the decorating tips and tricks email. So we're starting to put together, um, like a, 
fairly infrequent email that we're going to send out to our listeners, but it's going to have some extra content. It's going to have uh, probably some special discounts and brand uh, partnerships that we're working on that we can you know send to you in an email and just some interesting tidbits as we go along. Maybe we'll even feature some of our uh, listeners in there. So it'll be fun. And I think you guys would enjoy getting that in your uh, inbox as well. So sign up for the uh, uh, Decorating Tips and Tricks email. The link will be in the show notes. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. So did you have a crush for today? Oh, I do. I do have a crush for today. So my crush for today is my little stick vac that I just got. I've never had one oh, of those. Oh, oh, they're nice. I have oh my one. gosh. It's so great. And especially now that I have doggy number three, um, it's nice to just be able to zip around with that, not bring out the big vacuum and all that. So it's, I will put the link. It's a Eureka and it does all kinds of wonderful things and it gets onto the beds really nicely and it gets in all the nooks and crannies and you can take it apart. You could probably use it for your car, which I haven't done yet, but it can just become like a regular dust buster. And I had a dust buster, which I would like hunched over like going all around and now I have this stick thing I feel like you know just zip it around my house with it and I use it a lot more Mm -hmm. than I would the vacuum and it's a good thing as I said with the my third little doggy has really kind of pushed me over with the cordless you just feel like you can go grab it so much easier and well mine has a cord I have to say oh well I've got one that it's cordless but you know it's just charging and it's just so easy to whip out and you know vacuum up because we have a collie so there's right. hair all the time so i was really impressed i didn't think something like that would have the oomph that i would need so i will put the link to the show in the show notes to that nice so my crush is not really a crush so much as maybe a public service announcement okay uh, because when you know I, I mentioned evie got a new car so i was in communication with the insurance person hey put this new car on 
and she suggested, you know, you, if you took a defensive driving class, you would get a reduction in your, um, you know, car insurance uh, pricing for the year, actually for three years. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a substantial amount once all three of us take it. But I did take a class and it's actually one of those comedy ones. I wouldn't say it's really funny, but it did the <laughs> trick. <laughs> it's a comedy. <laughs> it's supposed to be a comedy one, but it's, it's like, it's look, it's, it's serious. I mean, you know, you yeah, want to be driving nothing, safely. I don't know yeah. why they're trying to make it funny. But anyway, but I will share the link to the one that I use. But it it went through my I got I passed my class, I passed it on to I mean, Good it was girl. super easy to do. Uh, well, you know, it's not like it was hard or anything. But anyway, but I got the I got the it, it worked. I sent it to my insurance and she applied the discount and it worked great. So yeah, So well, yeah, it's not just for when you have a ticket. You can just do it to get a better rate. You know, I, when you mentioned that, we used to do that when we were in New York. And I think it was mm-hmm. like my mom would always be like, oh, did you take that course? And then when we moved to California, I've never been offered that. And well, so she I'm suggested it. Missing out. I'm going to have to ask my my lady at um, State Farm. Well, I totally forgot about it. I mean, I just wasn't even thinking about yeah, it. And when smart. she said that, I'm thinking, oh, it's been since forever. And honestly, after taking the class, I have to say this. I am so glad I took it because it really is a reminder of all these safety things to keep in mind, you know, the, the distance from the other drivers and just some key things. I'm trying to remember what it was, but anyway, it just was a good refresher. I'm really, honestly, from a safety standpoint, I'm really glad I took it. Oh, wow. Okay. And you get a discount. That's pretty great. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks yeah. everybody for hanging out with us today and, you know, you know like coming along with us on this mind opening mind bending journey about oh i said the word journey yikes about well there's nothing wrong with i don't know why you don't like that name well here i don't like i i didn't like faux flowers and then i didn't like the word journey and now what's happening I like faux flowers and I just said the word journey. I don't know. You're changing. Not, You're changing. changing. I don't even know you anymore. I'm just such an open-minded person, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> thanks so much for hanging out with us today. It was so much fun. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space. We are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.